Yes, hello everyone, how are you? Uh, so, good, we are on, sort of on time. Yes, hi Liz, I can see Liz. Praise God, I can see others watching. God bless everyone, God bless everyone. Lovely to see you all, praise God. Okay, let's... Uh, we're getting started here this morning. I, I just want to go straight in to prayer. Let's uh, let's pray. Uh, just to, to say that uh, in this room, I have Macy Hello. and Micah Hello. and Samuel Evans and Sunny. And now let's all pray together, shall we? Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you then, Lord, for this opportunity to look into your word. We thank you for that uh, worship time that uh, we've enjoyed earlier, Lord, and beautiful songs. Thank you, Father God, that we can sing and make melody in our heart to you and the peace of God which transcends all understanding. It guards our hearts and our minds. And Father, as we enter in now then to the study of the word, we ask that you would manifest and speak to our hearts and our minds in Jesus' name. Thank you, Saviour. Amen. 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 Praise God, everyone. Praise God. Well, you know, I I just wanted to say, first of all, to everyone, that um, we we are living in strange days, obviously, and uh, we're, we're all becoming very familiar with, with that. But here's the thing that I was thinking about. You know, for us Christians, what a great opportunity to be an example. We, we are the ones who are called to be different to the world. So when you switch the news on and it's bad news and it's negative and it's defeated and it's all these sorts of things. Well, listen, we don't deny that bad things are happening. We're not denying that for a second. But what we're saying is that on the inside of us, we have Jesus Christ. Jesus lives on the inside of us and he has given us his life, his resurrection life. So whilst there are terrible things going on over there, we inside of us have the life of God, the life of Jesus, the hope of eternity. So we can't allow the negativity of the world and those who don't know Jesus to impress on us. In fact, it's the other way around. The life that's in us, the resurrection life in us must impress on the world. That's the way this thing works. So we have an influence into the world and the world doesn't have an influence into us. Now that's the way it should work. Now that's not always the case because even people who, you know, they seem to love the Lord, but they, they're very negative. They got into a very negative situation in their minds and, you know, they're, they're living. Well, why is that? That's because they've not truly yielded. Now, a lot of the time people think that they've yielded. They claim that they've yielded. But in truth, they haven't truly yielded. Because you know that when you truly yield, there's evidence. There's what the Bible calls fruit. You know, and you know someone and where they're at by the fruit of their lives. So, you know, in difficult circumstances, as I've often said, you know, if you have a sponge and you squeeze it, you find out where that sponge has been. So when the squeeze is on, you find out where people have been. And if people have been with the Lord and they've been in the word, when the squeeze comes, guess what comes out? The Lord and the word. But if people haven't been with the Lord in the world, they've been in other places, when they get squeezed, it comes out and it's negative and they, you know, they, 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 it's, it's a, just a negative situation. And that's not what we're called for. So I want to speak this morning then on, on several things, um, but I'm going to speak uh, promptly. And um, I want to say this, the number one way that we express our walk with God 
is in the saying of our words, okay? Um, the number one way that you walk with God is by opening your mouth and saying words. We've just had a wonderful time of worship. What did we do? We said words. Jesus, you are so gentle, so pure and so kind. You know, we, we're saying those words, we're worshipping him. You shine like the bright morning star. Jesus, what a wonder you are. And we say words, when we speak words out, that's a testimony out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the words that we speak are absolutely vital and over and over and over and over and over and over again in the old testament and the new testament we're taught about words and so i want to speak this morning about something to do with that about how that impacts on our lives in our worship you know if we if people speak negative words if they are complaining and negative and doubt-filled and not disciplined to the word of God, then that's going to manifest. It's going to rob them of what God wants for them. Um, it's impossible to walk with God in this life unless you're saying the same thing that God says. You can't talk unbelief, fear, sickness, poverty, and claim to be walking with God. It's de that's a delusion. It's delusional. It just doesn't work like that. No, no, no. If you're going to say the same thing that God says, you need to find out first of all what God says. And we find that out in the Word. And then we need to come into agreement with that. And how do we come into agreement? Well, we come into agreement mentally. So we believe that mentally. But we also come into agreement by then speaking that out. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Ah, oh, but I don't feel like the righteousness. That doesn't matter. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I will walk in that. And that's a discipline. And the enemy wants us not to speak that out. He wants us not to think that. He wants to get us into doubt, unbelief. And I'll tell you this, he uses the negative things of the world. So if you get someone feeding on the news, watching the news, and watching too much of that news, I don't watch it, by the way. I won't watch it because it's just filled with negative stuff. And I don't need to be listening and feeding in that. I, that's, I don't need it. I need to be listening to things which are positive, uplifting, faith-filled. And, you know, th those are the things that I need. And I know if I listen to those things, then I've got a healthy mind. My mind is healthy. My mouth will be healthy in what I speak. But that's a decision. You know, we make a decision as to what we choose to feed on. And believe me, if sitting in front of the television is a feeding time. And so, you know, watch out because we can feed on that stuff. We may not think that we're feeding, but it is a feeding time. And so this is a decision that we make. Now watch this. Um, Jesus says this. Jesus says in Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. And the word in the Greek is argos. It means every inactive, idle, lazy, useless, without work, without labor, doing nothing, careless, every word like that we'll have to give an account of. This means that we have to be pointed in our words. In other words, our words are meant to produce. I've mentioned this many times and it's, I, I believe that it's vital at this time because I hear so many things coming into people's minds, so much negativity pouring in. And I'm aware of so many people being impacted, even Christian people being impacted by the negative stuff that they just can't face it. This, 
This whole time has thrown them into a spin. Well, that just tells me that they haven't been yielded to the word. You know, uh, we can choose. Listen to me. Please listen to this. We can choose our thoughts and think things on purpose. So we can choose our thoughts and think things on purpose. In other words, I don't have to just think about whatever falls into my mind. Because if I go through the day, uh, things fall into your mind. And a lot of the stuff that falls into your mind isn't the stuff that you need to be thinking about. It can be an arrow shot from the enemy. An arrow is shot from the enemy, it falls into the mind. Well, what do I need to respond to that with? The shield of faith. The shield of faith puts out those arrows of the enemy that are, that are shot our direction. So as those arrows are shot our direction, it's the shield of faith that puts them out. How does that work? Well, the shield of faith works with the words that we speak, with entering into a time of worship. I'm going to worship you, Lord. I will worship you. I'll praise you and worship you. If a negative thought comes in, if something bad comes into the mind, respond by praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. Now, listen, men, men, let me tell you something. There's nothing macho about not being able to lift up your hands and worship the Lord and praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. I don't care who's watching me. I don't care if I'm with my with people who don't know who I uh, they don't they don't know me. And if the Lord tells me to do that, or if I'm inclined to do that, I'll do that. I won't be impolite. I won't be rude. I'll be sensitive to the environment and the situation I'm in. But if, for example, if I'm in uh, uh, the church, and if there's people around that I don't know. I, I don't I'm not going to concern myself with with what they think about me. I don't care what they think. Their opinion isn't that important. And I find that men very often, you know, men ought to take the lead in this. Men take the lead in things, but men very often very conscious of what people think. They want to just be all, you know, listen, let's lift up our hands. Let's worship God and say, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. What a great example to set for our children, men and women. And women, obviously, the same thing applies. Listen, let's not be self-conscious. Let's just lift up our hands, worship the Lord, praise him. And then you see what we become is we're people who are yielded to God, people whose lives are just yielded to God. I don't care what people think. Who cares what they think? They're thinking a lot of nonsense anyway, usually. I mean, really, what is their opinion? I mean, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, this is very important for us. We, we must think on these things and be worshippers of God. It says in Proverbs 23, 7, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. In other words, where the mind goes, the life follows. Where the mind goes, the life follows. Where the mind goes, the life will follow. So if you allow your mind to go down negative paths and be influenced by negative people and negative situations and, you know, just be negative, if you allow that to happen, then what will happen is your life will go down those routes. Well, we're not going to have that. We're going to have lives that are worshipful lives, lives that are honoring God, praising God, lives that are for Him, worshipping Him. Amen? That's Amen. the life that we're going to have. Amen. So if you want joy, think of joy. Think of joy, joyous things. You know, if you want to have a joyful life, think the joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. Have that song in your mind. Sing it. Let it come out of your, of your mouth. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You hear the news report. You know the news report comes in. The TV happens to be on or something. Or the radio's on and some terrible negative thing. Don't allow it to, to dwell in there. Just respond. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. 
The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If you want joy, then praise the Lord. If you want joy, then praise the Lord. If you want joy, then praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's, that's the way we respond. Now, how about this? If you want success, oh yes. If you want success, think on success. Do you know some people, people who aren't focusing on the word of God truly, right? But they just got enough religion to be negative. And there's a lot of that around. If a lot of people like that, they don't even like to think of God wanting success for them. They think that God is there with a big stick, you know, and he's just sort of, you know, just sort of, you know, they're just controlling people and, you know, just so they've got a funny picture of God. It's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible loves us, wants the best for us, wants us to prosper, wants us to do well, loves us so much as his darling children. And I encourage everyone here, listen, think of success Think success in life. Think of your success. Well, what are you doing in life? Listen, whatever you're doing, whatever job you do in life, do it to the best of your ability. Just do it to the best of your ability. And, and you know, um, just think that God wants you to do this job so that you have success in it. Whatever it is that... that you know, believe God that it's going to have a great impact. I've been working on these Bible studies now for the last few few weeks. We've been putting Bible study, Bible courses together. And some of the students are in America. Some are in different places around the world. Well, those courses, I know, as I put in the courses together, I'm thinking of the students going through the questions. Some of you have received some of the, um, the first um, uh, courses and uh, I know I've had some feedback. It's they've been well received. But I've been thinking of the students, you know, and, and it's changing lives. And it's success. It's having a successful impact on their lives. But whatever you're doing, think of success like that. And if you want victory in a situation, think victory. If you want, to, if you want the word to direct you, think on the word. Think on the word of God. If you want the Holy Spirit um, to direct you. Then, you know, you start speaking out to the Holy Spirit, thinking of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I mean, that's, that's what we do. So, you know, if you want fear, think fear. Oh, yeah, some people choose fear. Listen to me, everyone. If you want fear, then think fear-filled thoughts. You can think of all sorts of things. You can employ your imagination to think of fearful things. You can think on disease. You can think on sickness. You can think on all sorts of fearful things. Lack, poverty, all sorts of things you can think of. And the enemy will be delighted. He'll throw a few more in there as well. And if you start thinking on those things, what happens is they just keep on producing after themselves. And soon enough, people will become depressed down, defeated, um, you know, th those things will produce, they'll come. That's why we've got to be very mindful of what we think of. We've got to think on the right things. I like what the Apostle uh, Paul says, you know, in Philippians 4.4, 4, uh, where he is <laughs> in a, facing death, you know, by execution under the Romans, uh, what does he say? He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Listen, this is a time for Christians to be manifesting happiness, joy, joyousness, the blessedness of God, you know. And religion of Christianity has come and robbed people of that. So the religion of Christianity, which I believe has been inspired by Satan in many areas so for example thinking that there was some piety to poverty which is a nonsense anyone who's seen starving children like the children that we have had the privilege to send money to recently in the philippines you see those starving children um on, on the rubbish dump there 
And, um, you know, there's no piety in that. That's from Satan. And anyone who can't see it isn't thinking clearly, okay? Poverty is from the devil. Lack is from the devil. Abundance and prosperity is from God. It's so simple. You've got to, be, you've got to have a good big dose of religion not to see that. You need a big dollop of religion in your mind not to get it, okay? It's so simple. Um, but we've been fed a lot of dollops of religion in this country. And we need to do away with all of that so that we can be blessed to be a blessing into this world because the world needs it. I'm getting emails through and letters through from people who need resources. People are starving in places in the world. Well, we're blessed to some degree in this country, but let's be blessed to the fullest degree that God wants for us. And let's live in his abundant supply. Amen. 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 So rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If you want success, think success and talk it out. If you want victory, think victory and talk it out. It's so important for us to understand this because if we don't learn how to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, as 2 Corinthians 10 uh, talks about, we can't live the life that Jesus died to give us. Jesus came to introduce his kingdom onto the earth. Jesus came that we could have an abundant life. John 10.10 10, I've come that you may have life and life more abundant and an abundant life is ours. And, you know, if we don't make the decision every day, and it is a daily decision to walk in this way, then we can be robbed by the enemy of this abundant life. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes. Let's just, let's just thank the Lord now. Let's just thank the Lord, everyone. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Just worship him now. Let the words come out of your mouth and worship him. Don't worry about who you're around. Just worship him. Everyone's in their own homes in the main. If you have family members who don't know the Lord, it's okay. They'll be a good example to them. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy, 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 holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. You know, in, in Luke 4.4, uh, 4, Jesus answered him saying, It is written, The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He's saying that we're to live by the word of God. OK, uh, so there has to be life in the word of God. He's telling us to live by it. So there's life in it for us to live by it. Um, and we're called to live by the word of God. Then uh, it says this man shall not live by bread alone. This means that you won't live by bread alone. You're going to live by the word of God. It, it's, it's essential for the very life that we're to live his life not not the physical just the physical it includes the physical but it's his life and, and we have to live by that word it, what, what he's done in saying that Jesus is he's, he's saying look it's very intense what he's saying he's linking life itself to his word he's connecting our very lives to his word and he's saying, look, that you can't separate those. If you're a believer now, you're to live that life that's connected, totally connected to his word. In other words, the word of God is essential to life. It becomes an essential element of life. OK. Now, when we understand that, it's very important that we understand that. Uh, it's, it's vital that we understand that. Uh, Luke 4 4 Jesus answered him by saying it is written the man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God and in Matthew 4 4 it says by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God so God is saying things and I have to live by those things that God is saying 
and there's life in those things that God's saying. And he wants me to connect the life of those words to my life so that they're inextricably linked. They're intertwined together. So his word is in me. It's abiding in me. And then it's, it's part of the very substance of, of my daily walk. So, for example, um, you know, what kind of life comes out of that? When we walk like that, what, what life manifests from that dependency? Well, it's, it's very interesting. Um, whatever life was in the word that you've just studied or that you've been thinking of or that the Lord, the Holy Spirit has perhaps put into you. But, you know, he works with what we've got. So if we've been studying to show ourselves approved, the Holy Spirit then ministers into us through that word. So, for example, okay, where, um, where it says, let's say, um, by his stripes I'm healed, what kind of word is going to come out of your mouth if you've been thinking on that? If that's the word that God has placed in you that you're to live by, if that's the word that's giving you life, what, what, what are you meant to receive from that? What are you meant to live by that word? Well, by his stripes I'm healed. I'm meant to be healed. Amen. So, you see, this word is meant to be so securely intertwined into our lives that we receive from it the very thing that it says we're meant to receive. Not something else. It's not abstract. It's not some theological theory. We're meant to receive what it's saying. Where to receive. I mean, God is God. God is clear in what he said. These are the words of Jesus. I, by his stripes, I am healed. The words of the New Testament, quoting the Old Testament. What kind of life is going to come out of you into this world that you live in if you're studying that word healing and you will live by it man shall live by if we were going to live by it there has to be life in it so we're going to live by the healing of God and that word spoken out of your mouth is how you get life out of it so you get life out of what God's word has intertwined into you by agreeing with it and speaking it out. That's how it comes. So it's intertwined into you through the mind. It gets intertwined into you. It's abiding in you. And you activate it when you speak it out. You speak it out. And that's the active agent. That's the active agent for that life. You speak it out. Just as God spoke it in. God spoke it in. You speak it out. God spoke it in through the Logos. God spoke it in through the Rima. You speak it out. And when you speak it out, you have shown that you're in agreement with the word of God. That's how we show we're in agreement with the word of God. Now, if we speak out words that are not in agreement, that'll prove something as well. That will negate from the word of God. You see, we have the power to receive from the word or we have the power to deny from the word. And some people, if they're going to sit around and say, well, you know, I'm not sure. I don't, but I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm not sure. That's right. That's absolutely right. You're not sure and you won't receive from it. That's what you confirmed it by not being sure. It's your prerogative. It's entirely up to you. It's your choice. It's absolutely up to you. But if you're one of those people who's prepared to say, God said it, I'm going to believe it and I will receive from this. I don't care. I don't care what people think. I'm not interested in what people think. I don't care what they have to say. They, their opinion isn't high enough. I, I'm interested in what God says and what Jesus has said, who is my Lord, who, has, who is the author of my eternal life. And on here, planet Earth, I'm going to live by his words. Not some uh, religiously bound preacher 
or someone who's airy-fairy or whatever it might be. No, I'm going to live by God and what his words say. Um, so, you know, it, this is a beautiful thing. Every word of God that has the ability within itself, every word of God has the ability within itself to bring itself to pass. So the word of God is... Uh, is is powerful and and, and it, it is like um it's like an explosion uh, is contained within those words the explosive power of god you know the dunamis uh, of god the dynamite power of god is is within those words in other words the power to change something to drastically change like dynamite explodes a mounting away or whatever it might be or a building or whatever that contains it, uh, the word of God. Uh, the word of God contains that type of power to totally and dramatically change a situation, a circumstance in our lives. So when it says, for example, by his stripes you are healed, then there's healing in that verse and that's going to come to pass. I will accept that. He said he's going to prosper you. I'm going to accept the prosperity of God. You think, I, you know, when I've preached prosper for a long time, telling people about being prosperous, trying to encourage people to be prosperous, people have had so much religious stuff put in their minds, they think that's a bad thing. They think you're being selfish. Oh, you're being selfish. You're being, they've got funny religious attitudes. When the Bible is so clear, the blessing of the Lord is maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Now, that's the word of God, brothers and sisters. That's the word of God right there. Proverbs 10, 22. Let's just take that, okay? Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Rich. That's what it says. It says rich. And he addeth no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, who wouldn't want that? You, you've got to be someone who's had a big dollop of religion not to want that. You know, and, and the devil tricks people. See, the devil is cunning. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's a thief. He's going to try and steal that from people. He doesn't want Christians to be rich. Because if Christians are rich, well, they can send money to poor starving children for example and those poor starving children children who are starving to death okay they can send stuff to them and then they can be blessed and now we've got an influence into a situation because we've practically helped people so the enemy doesn't want that oh no 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 the enemy wants christians now be nice and poor and make it look like it's being humble. Make it look like there's some, you know, um, something deeply spiritual about it, you know. Oh, yes, we're, we're going to be all, you know, like, you know. It's nonsense. No, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Rich. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be blessed. I want to be rich. I want to be blessed. Speak it out loud. Tell everyone. Yes, I'm blessed by the Lord God Almighty. He made me rich. Hallelujah. And he addeth no sorrow with it. Now that's part of what the, that's the scripture, friends. I'm not speaking my own. This isn't the doctrine of Steve Evans. This is the Holy Bible. Proverbs 10, 22. We could go on many other places, but it's, it's blessed to be a blessing. It's different than the world. It's not what the world has. The world is all for um, blessings for selfish reasons. This isn't for selfish reasons. This is blessed to be a blessing to others and to point others then the way of the one who does the blessing. God's way to say, look, God loves you. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose. You see, blessed to be a blessing, but it starts out in the mind. The first place for this is to, is to get it straight in your mind. 
that you're meant to receive the blessings of God. Get that straight and don't be apologetic about it and reject all religious dogma that's been infiltrated in there. Just refuse that stuff and then say, no, I'm going to receive from God Almighty and I know he loves me and I know I'm a favorite of his. You can think of yourself as a favorite, you know, because you're elect, you're chosen. If you're a child of the living God, if you're part of his family, you're elect and you're chosen. You can think of yourself as a favorite of God. And you know what? In all of these things, it's very important because Hebrews eleven six it says this, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, it's impossible to please God. And having faith, without faith, we need faith to please God. Faith is the key aspect of pleasing God. And having faith, it means this. It means that we believe, we agree on, we accept what God has said. So it means that we believe, we agree, we accept what God has said in God's word. And then we live by that. You see? Now, let, let me just say this as I come to a close here. I'm just going to come to a close, but listen to me. This is important. You know, it said Jesus in the Lord's Prayer, you know, he says this, Matthew 6, 10, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. By the way, you know, we're in this teaching series. I, I spoke on those four steps to victory. Well, we're still in the word. If anyone was wondering, we're still in the step of the word. Okay, so agreeing with the word. I just sensed that we were meant to stay here and just stay in this this week. Um, and when Jesus says this in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in earth, in earth as it is in heaven. Well, what's his will like in heaven? Well, I mean, you know, we're praying for that prayer to be prayed with integrity. It, it, we've got to really pray that prayer with integrity. We've got to believe that his will is going to be done in earth. He's commissioned us to cause his will to be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, what's his will like in heaven? Well, his will in heaven is revealed in the word. You know, we have clues in the word. I mean, let's go to Revelations 4, for example. And verses 8 to 11, it says this, there's a constant chant of holy angels. They're continually proclaiming, holy, 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 over the throne of God in heaven. The mercy seat in heaven where God sits is surrounded by magnificent angels, full of glory and power that proclaim and bless the holy name of God without ceasing. I've seen angels, brothers and sisters. I've seen angels. On a couple of occasions, I've seen angels. I ha there's been a sp there was a I've seen angels. I've seen the good angels. This week, I've been counselling people, people, numerous people, who've been attacked by evil spirits. But I've seen the angels in different times. I've seen where an um, evil spirits. You know, there there's a reality. Evil spirits exist. There is evil. There's an evil side to things. I won't go into it now, but at some point I want to share about the reality of those things because I need people to understand these truths. But look what, look what heaven is like. Magnificent angels full of glory and power that proclaim and bless the holy name of God without ceasing. Some of these are described as beasts full of eyes with six wings and they neither rest day nor night and they proclaim the holiness of God. And then John, you know, he describes in Revelation 21. Just come with me. Revelation 21 and verse 10 onwards. I'll just read from this. Verse 10 from Revelation 21. It says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a high great wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates to the east, 
Three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and there were three gates on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold, of gold, to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with a rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia, or that's about 1,400 miles in length, and as wide and as high as it is long. The angels measured the wall using hum human measurements, and it was 144 cubits. That's 200 feet thick. <laughs> the wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold as pure glass. This is heaven, everyone. Can you see the picture that God's given? The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure and as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun nor the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendour to it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life, my friend? Ah, I hope it is. I hope your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If it is, this is what awaits you in heaven. One day, this is the heavenly picture that we've got. These are the clues of what we should bring down to, to this earth. In other words, what does that mean? How does that translate? Well, here's how it translates. We should not have a poverty, lack, sickness mentality. We should have a mentality that is buoyant, that is abundant, that is prospering, that is very positive. And we need to be encouraging and we need to be worshipful people, living in the worship of God, praising God and worshipping him and having a can-do attitude, never allowing words out of your mouth that says, oh, we can't afford to do that. Never, ever say that. Don't put that on yourself. I don't care what it is. Uh, you know, never say that about yourself. Keep quiet and then go to the Lord. Spend time with him. And by the way, worship, you know, when we worship, it's nice to worship like this on, on you know, as we worshiped earlier this morning. But I want to say to everyone, listen, worship the Lord on your own. Worship him on your own throughout the week. Make sure that you're worshiping him. I said this to the worship team. Listen, on a Sunday morning is not the time when you should be worship. Uh, may, Singing songs on a Sunday morning isn't the time for your worship. The time for your worship is throughout the week, every day, worshipping the Lord, living with an attitude of worship. So that when Sunday morning comes, it's very easy. You just drift into worship. It's no big deal because you've been doing it all week long. Hello, am I getting through? Is anyone listening? Hallelujah, glory. Amen. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he's calling us, everyone, to worship him and to live in victory, live the abundant life of Jesus. Here's another clue. Jesus came that we may have life and life to the full. The abundant life of God is ours. I'm not going to settle for anything less. I've made a decision to live in victory, to live in abundance, to live as an overcomer, to live with joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the life I'm living. And that's the life I give to you this morning. Brothers and sisters, let's live with that life in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Love you and God bless. <laughs>